Hello, everybody. I'm going to take a look at I Find No Peace by Sir Thomas Wyatt. So a bit of historical context. I don't think there's much, but we do want to be familiar with the kind of history surrounding uh, the sonnet and the Petrarchan sonnet in particular. So Sir Thomas Wyatt was a Renaissance writer. So that's something that you could you could mention in your essay once. Um, lived from 1503 to 1542. And he is principally known for bringing the sonnet to English literature from Italy. Uh, and then uh, around half a century after he brings these sonnets to English literature, Shakespeare begins to um, to play with them and to change them. And, and that's how the Shakespearean sonnet is is born. But this poem is a Petrarchan sonnet. Now, it's called a Petrarchan sonnet because for two reasons. One, it follows the, the form of a Petrarchan sonnet. But this is literally a sonnet written by Petrarch. So Petrarch is the anglicised, the English um, version of the name Petrarca. So this poem is, a, is, is just a translation of Petrarca's sonnet 104. Okay, so that's the kind of background that we want to have. The most important thing is that you understand that this is a sonnet, that this is a translation of a sonnet, and what that means for a poem. Okay, so before I go into some of the language, I want to talk about what makes this a Petrarchan sonnet. So it's a Petrarchan sonnet for a few reasons. It's 14 lines. It consists of, firstly, an eight-line section known as an octave, and then finally a six-line section known as a sestet. It follows an A, B, B, A, A, B, B, A rhyme scheme with a C, D, E, C, D, E rhyme scheme in the sestet. Um, it uses um, iambic pentameter, 10 syllables per line, with the emphasis on the second and fourth and sixth and eighth and tenth syllable. Um, so it reads something like, I find no peace and all my war is done. I fear and hope. I burn and freeze like ice. I fly. Hopefully you can hear that. Um, but what's significant about it being a Petrarchan sonnet, because just spotting a feature, just spotting the form is is not worth that many marks, is to is to say that this carries with it very strong connotations of romantic love. Petrarca wrote sonnets to seduce women. A sonnet is written as an expression of devotional love. So clearly, um, a sonnet is meant to be about love. It's meant to bring to the reader's mind an awareness of love. Okay, that's a, con that's a literary convention of the time. The second thing you might say is that the use of iambic pentameter seems to um, mimic perhaps the rhythm of the heartbeat. OK, I find no peace and all my war is done. So perhaps, again, there's a connotation of love through the sound of the human heartbeat. OK, so there's good form and structural analysis for you to do there. And I'd like to now jump into some close language analysis. The first thing I'd say is this is a poem of opposites. I've highlighted six examples of completely opposite words. Peace, war, hope, fear, burn, freeze, naught, all, live, die, health, perish. These are opposing words that juxtapose with one another to show, I think, that love has two sides. Love can be beautiful and love can be ugly. It can be brilliant. It can be terrible. So I think the, the, the opposite words show the opposite sides of love. And the way I would express that is I'd use the phrase, the duality of love. Okay, so I talk about the duality of love. Something that I find interesting about this poem which it took me a few readings to realise, is just how many first-person pronouns occur in 14 lines of poetry. And I counted, and there are 25 first-person pronouns. That's almost two per line. 
I, me, my. This is a very self-centered view of love. For the speaker, it's all about them. Now, if we wanted to be generous, we might say, well, it's because they're isolated and lonely. But I don't think that's right. I think it's a very, very self-centered view. And it might even serve as a bit of a criticism, potentially, of the speaker here. Looking at the first and second line, the sound that I keep hearing is the F sound. I find, I fear, freeze. Now that, that repetition of the F sound is called fricative alliteration. And I think what it does is it serves to establish the frustration that this speaker feels to be going through this, this love that's very difficult. Okay, so for me, fricative alliteration, easily analyzable, high level language technique, excellent. I then look at the image of war and of prison, these metaphors that are used to describe love. So firstly, my war. So love is described with this military image, this military metaphor of war. And that tells you about love. It tells you that love is a struggle, that love can be scary and painful and all the things that love, that war is. And the second metaphor that's used is the metaphor of prison holdeth me in prison and that tells me that within this love he feels trapped he feels um like he cannot escape so these two metaphors could combine for one of your paragraphs of analysis and i think that would be excellent and i'll lastly just look at this line i love another and thus i hate myself now that verb hate is a strong word and it shows the intensity of his feelings but it really for me if you, if you get a question about how love is presented Clearly, it's a it's a very self critical one. It's full of self hatred and self loathing. Okay, so with this poem, I would want to focus on the use of the Petrarchan sonnet and the use of these juxtaposing images in the top left of my screen, and then I'd have a few other little bits to to finish off my argument. Okay. <laughs>